Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast with three brothers trying to figure it all out with your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, The Away Cafe. Hello. Why, hello. <laughs> right, right on time. Man, I'm good at predicting these things. God damn, sorry. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Okay. What? Just yeah. there. there we go. I was uh, just commenting ah, an on my an impeccable an ability an to predict well. when uh, when I'm going to be places. <clears throat> I'm here right on time. Hello. Yes. Of course. Here you go. The wizard arrives exactly when he means to. So I think the same with podcast, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Turns out you're a wizard. That's what that's what Lord of the Rings was missing. They were missing Hagrid. Who's that, the Hagrid? That's what it was missing. What? Yeah, who's ha- who's the Hagrid of Lord of the Rings? Gimli. Who's the Hagrid? Yeah. I mean, only insofar as that he is bearded. Yeah, but Gimli doesn't. Uh, Gimli, Gimli is not necessarily jovial and uh, loves animals. I mean, kind so, of, sort of is because you know, I think he, it's Radagast. I was going to say Radagast for sure, but he's. <laughs> but it's it's tough because you know, like Hagrid is just like a little, like a wee bit magical. Like he's not a full fledged. Um, but Radagast. Well, that's only because he got kicked out of school. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Like, and he's not. Well, and he's not allowed to. Right. Technically, he's not allowed to. Well, yeah. So it. technically, you don't get to see the full extent of his power. Much this like is Radagast. True. They never show that. Right. They. You know, there's the pigtail and the flying motorcycle, which actually, you know, he doesn't do anything about. But he gets that from Sirius. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's the rat. I think it's Radagast. Pretty sure. He's Radagast. Is that where? Is that where yeah. he gets the motorcycle? Does he get it from Sirius Black? Uh, I oh. think so. Get that. I'm not. I don't. I haven't read the books in a couple years now, so uh, I don't yeah. remember exactly. Pretty sure. <laughs> anyway, I think that that sounds right to me. From I mean, given things, the so given the character, I don't know who yeah. else would be cool enough to have a flying motorcycle. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, not Lupin. That's for sure. That's dangerous, yeah. right? No. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, and we're breaking through the clouds right now. And oh no, <laughs> oh no, the moon. Oh god. <laughs> anyway, back down. Crash. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> Crash motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so bad times. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, now they have that question out of the way. Um, Perfect. What a good show opener. Yeah. How's uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, pretty good. Now, very eventful uh, week here. So now yeah, it's nice. you've been um, doing literally all the things. Um, down <laughs> for now. Everything is fine. <laughs> soothing, right? Right. Thinking soothing thoughts because. Man, it's been crazy around here. So, <laughs> good yeah. to go now. <laughs> good. <laughs> oh man. So yes, listeners, to, to clue you in, uh, I'll spare you some of the games. But uh, last week, my wife had to have like emergency gallbladder removal surgery ah. uh, because of it was not going well, and then. Um, they like we had to have an emergency follow up surgery to make sure everything was cleared out, make sure there was like gall stonage happening. So everything is good now. That was a very I don't really remember the weekend because there was no sleeping. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that was the whole. Yeah. So you know, she's out of her surgery and then she goes back and it's like, and here we go again. Yeah, oh, no. she just likes to. She just likes it there, right? She just likes to hang out. There. Does, she, does she enjoy ambulance rides? That's what I'm feeling like. I'm good. Yeah, I feel like she really does. Uh, she she 
uh, she bonded. Eyes on duty. Right. It's fine. <laughs> also, uh, a small side note. Several of the ambulance people around here are graduates from the school that we work at. So, like, we know them. <laughs> <laughs> the last time the last time she had to go yeah the last time she had her other surgery uh she like went in the ambulance with like pe- like uh, one of the girls that graduated and so they were just like hang out <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so she's very friendly just like hanging out talking to everybody chilling the ambulance you know it's a good time <laughs> jeez <laughs> So yes, well you know it's, now we're good. Catch up. She's been eating audience. our yeah. low fat diet, right? Being all chill. Yeah. Trying to avoid excitement for a little while. It's been <laughs> too much the past several weeks. Too much excitement. So yeah, you do need a bit downtime, or lack thereof, rather. So yeah, how are you guys doing, Airman? I, uh, eh, yeah, it's, um, not, but definitely not as, yeah, as adventurous as Brandon's, but my week has been absolutely crazy. So on, on, on certain weeks, um, I do what's called on call, which anything after five or if law enforcement requests, uh, I'm I'm on call. Like if there's some sort of emergency or if law enforcement needs somebody, they call me. Um, this week ah. um, has probably has probably been one of possibly my busiest weeks in a long time. Uh, hmm. Typically, like a normal one of my normal weeks for me being on call is either um, <clears throat> oh excuse me um, oh hey let's uh, you know. I can call Aaron maybe once, maybe. Um, this week I've been called Friday night of last week twice, two calls. Um, Saturday, Monday, maybe not Monday. I think Monday was like the only day I just got to sleep in uh, or sleep. Tuesday, I got a call relatively not super late and then that was tuesday wednesday i got a call late wednesday night um and then i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna jinx anything else today i'm not gonna say a word um because i don't want the dhs gods to um to smite me down or anything um if you if you talk too much ill on i'm like oh my week was easy then so i'm not gonna say a word um <laughs> But my my week in in that regards has been uh has been very chaotic. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sit down and do this. Oh, nope, I got to drive an hour and a half somewhere. Cool these. Um, thankfully, everything has been relatively minimal in some cases. Um, they they've all been you know pretty pretty manageable, pretty you know. Mm-hmm. Relax. I think last night it took me longer to get there than it was to actually talk to people. Um, Let's go. That, that kind of puts that kind of, kind of puts in perspective how big and annoying this place is. Um, but that's kind of been about my week. Um, <clears throat> in a nutshell, I've, I've established this a weird, annoying cough that I was standing out in the rain last night. So that probably. Aha. <laughs> that, oh, no. Where that came from. So <laughs> where where came Aaron from. is uh, Yeah, I cause I was I was in a I had all these allergies. I um uh, and then that and then I had an eight thirty meeting that I had to speak at like eighty percent of the time and I was like welcome this is my name is Aaron. Uh you know, we have this is the reason why we got involved. Excuse me, why? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that was me this morning. I find I sound way better, but not by much. Oh, I'm just yeah, gonna, so yeah. Aaron. Oh, god, <laughs> I was gonna make a joke oh, about calling you. I have to have, have to send you the vinegar honey recipe. Oh, yes, 
yeah, the patented <laughs> honey recipe that Brandon loves and endorses. Well, so I got, uh, I got this Absolutely. like little, little cough spray stuff. Um, and it, it actually kind of works. It actually kind of numbs like the back, like, you know, numbs my throat. So I don't feel like I'm going to cough every five seconds. So it's kind of nice. I got oh, yeah. loaded up on that this morning. Um, and last night and the night before. Um, and everyone's like, Oh, Aaron, is it allergies? Well, I'm sitting there like sniffling in the corner. Yes. Yes, it is allergies. I will fight you in a heartbeat. I have no problem. I will take you out right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's been a, a summary of Aaron's week. Um, of just me just, you know, working like, ah, yes, I get to take nighttime medicine. No, I have to go somewhere. Excellent. Okay. Let me just. Go somewhere. Oh, it's raining. Oh, awesome. Perfect. This <laughs> cultivates the what? excellent what luck. Yes, perfect. Um, and you know, it's some, sometimes I can't, I can't really complain because there, there are some times where I'm like, oh man, my week sucked. I got, you know, I had to drive down the road and talk to this person, and then like I talked to some of my coworkers, and they're like, yeah, we had to talk to a family that had like twelve children. I'm like. Oh no, that's no. I'm I'm okay, thank you. And then and then it completely flips, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we haven't had to talk to a person like in two weeks." And like I've been literally talking to everyone in the state of Oklahoma. I've been having to do a thousand things. I've been going to court. I've been doing all this. Why is it up to me? <laughs> in the you know classic, um, I think it was Beethoven. That wrote the "Why does this happen to me?" Someone like that. Ah, <laughs> um, uh, yes, my, my well-known classic. <laughs> yes, Beethoven, Mozart, romantic you know, period. Yes, um, I was on plays, I and on so I'm like, yeah, see, um, yeah, that plays, and I'm like, ah, this is perfect. This is my life. I'm having fun. All of the fun. So, yeah, well, that's been that. that's my week in a relative nutshell. Well, just don't pull well, out Harrison. Hopefully, it... pull the what? Yeah, Harrison, President Harrison, yeah. stood in the rain, but... talking a lot. Oh, yeah, no, no, thank you. I don't have. Oh, I... oh, okay. I was like, pres... give me a second. Wow, like... deep cut <laughs> reference. The one everybody knows. Good old President William Henry Harrison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He died He's thirty-two the... days into his. You know, <laughs> obviously, Every... uh. everybody, everybody knows that guy. Uh, I had no idea what there we talking about. <laughs> uh, it took me a minute. The first thing I was like, Harrison Ford? What? Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, don't you crash know, your plane. What do you do? do? Get <laughs> off my plane. You don't crash your plane into a golf course. Clearly. That's mm-hmm. what the message of the story <laughs> Moral of the story. <laughs> don't stand in the rain and crash your plane in a golf course. That's what I got from that. <laughs> I was talking to somebody yesterday, Dude. and they were like, I don't know, man. I think Con Air is not that good of a movie. And I'm like, okay, first of all, you need to leave this country now. <laughs> Why don't you put the wow, money back in the box? Definitely. Like, <laughs> definitely a take. A great movie. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I don't love Con, but man, for some reason, Susan loves that movie like so much. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like it's okay, I guess. <laughs> Fine, but like I don't know. That's definitely not my. I mean, come on, top got... list there. I don't know. Steve Buscemi, John Malkovich, uh, Jimmy, John Malkovich. Come on, it's got Malkovich. Come on, how could you not? All, all you really need, right? I like how you're naming every single person not named Nicolas Cage in this movie. That's the that's the hilarious part here. That tells me everything I need to know. Well, I mean, if we're being real with ourselves, speaking of speaking of the worst accents ever put on film, uh, whatever he's doing in that movie, like I'm, who knows? I'm true. Right? Sounds like a cross between like Miss Scarlet, right? Like I declare, but like. <laughs> deeper something. gravelier like i don't really understand what that <laughs> i don't think he understands no I'm sure. <laughs> no he doesn't 
Uh, but it's amazing how you know how he does remain have some level of continuity with it through it. I'm so. They must That's true. Have, they must have had somebody on set uh, just paying attention to his accent. Be like, look, okay, he has no idea what he's doing, but we need you to just listen <laughs> to make sure he's doing this every single time he's on screen. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know about that. That sounds like a level of uh, like dedication that would not be president present excuse me in a movie called on air right that sounds like uh, like that's like day lewis level of that's true. <laughs> that's good point dedication Fair not necessarily yeah. is and i know i know like hating on nicholas cage is like right i don't like that's not what i'm doing here i'm just saying on air great movie ridiculous uh is <laughs> gone in 60 seconds because that movie's hilarious <laughs> <Do> you... <laughs> oh man the, the God, I just like because it it's so goofy <laughs> yeah it's definitely one of those where like, <laughs> you, you you do have to kind of take a moment and go like wait are they playing this seriously or is it all kind of tongue-in-cheek Yeah, no, no, they're not. After a yeah. while, you realize, oh no, this is like <laughs> crazy silliness, right? Like, <laughs> so it plays it off a little bit different, uh, you know. But it's funny to watch. I saw it was on TV the other day, and I just watched it, and I was like, still funny, still silly, still gonna watch it. Like, I don't <laughs> right. It's well, still it's just, a little too melodramatic for a movie about stealing cars. Uh, but like... <laughs> it's just funny, right? It's just... It's just <laughs> it's one of those, like, I don't need to think at all through this, right? Like, even the weird twist in it, like, no. Like, it's... <laughs> right? It's yeah, funny. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's fine. Right. But, you know, I like it for... Just kind of the silly action y nice stuff. That's what I sure. <laughs> I like it a lot. So it's fun. You know. So I know I know hating on Nick Cage is a meme. It's not what I'm doing here. Uh I do like that movie. I just, you know, not Con Air or many other ones. Just... <laughs> <laughs> not Wicker you're not a fan of Wicker Man? Um the man. No man, that was that was <laughs> that movie is so weird. Okay. Uh I'll, I'll, to be fair, that movie is not only let down by Nicolas Cage, right? Like there's a good movie in there somewhere, but it's like very deeply hidden. <laughs> They they made it. Yeah. The first one was not that bad, right? Like, <laughs> like wasn't there? Wasn't there? Was yeah, there, right. Like, like the premise is fine, and you know, I think so. I don't know if I've seen that one. It's hard to say. Yeah, but like, it's uh, it's a little rough. <laughs> I it's it's a little crazy. Um, I'm out. Like, yeah, I, I always don't. wondered. <laughs> I always wondered. I was like, why is Nicolas Cage in all of these way like weird off the wall movies? And then when I learned that it's because he buys the rights to them, and then he does the production, and then like he that puts in all of that work, I was like, oh, he just like he just likes acting, right? Like he that's just what he enjoys doing, and he's just doing stuff yeah stuff. yeah just does these crazy things just to yeah. do something different right yeah so i get that that makes sense it's just <laughs> whatever i don't know i don't know i I'm not gonna... like what are you gonna do <laughs> uh I don't know. Uh, to segue us out of this, I do have a brief follow-up to a topic of conversation from the other day. 
uh, I wrote down in my little uh, paper here. Oh, um, oh hold on. Pause. I was I just a, like, I, I this is... Awake. Oh, okay. Sorry. Cut. I mean, <laughs> they want to join on the topic too. They can. I mean, like... <sighs> And we're back. Yeah, like smooth yeah. criminal. She like, probably hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> well, she might have. Oh, there we go. Hi. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. Hello. Um, so this is one of those like examples of like uh, whatever. I, we talked about this before, too. I can't remember the name of it because I only ever hear it called the wrong name. Right. That thing where you like you, you hear it once and then it like shows up a whole bunch throughout your day just because it's on your mind. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That like psychological thing that happens. Whatever that is. Um, <clears throat> I was just like hanging out and I was just scrolling through my news feed and what what name did I see scroll across my Google news feed? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Hannah Barbera. Uh from our episode the other day explaining Rockadoodle, we were talking about how I did not know that Hannah Barbera existed <laughs> until like two thousand or whatever. <laughs> uh, apparently it's coming back. Dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> so they're like, <laughs> the, uh, they're, the, what, what Time Warner or whatever, like AT&T, Time Warner, me, whatever, the giant media conglomerate that owns everything is, um, they are renaming Cartoon Network Studios Europe, Hanna-Barbera Studios. Boom, and they're going to be in, involved in like several new uh, like television animation like series. Wham! That's, <laughs> that's fascinating. I that's weird to me from a that was crazy standpoint of like why they feel like that name like because nobody. Nobody knows what that is anymore, right? Like, it just seems well, like your name to bring back. Well, I mean, I think part of it is like it is a name that has like historic significance. Well, sure. In in yeah. in that field, right? Right. And um, <clears throat> part you know that that um, so like. It's a historic name. They're they're bringing it out. Part of it's a marketing thing, I think. Sure. Right. Because like the the kids that have watched the show or the young adults, whatever age group these shows are aimed at, um, you know, this kind of like early teen, young kid audience, they're not necessarily gonna care who is making what media company is behind making their thing, but like their parents we'll see like Hanna Barbera and they will be like, Oh yeah, I know that. That's a familiar thing. I feel okay with my kids watching Hanna Barbera because I love Hanna Barbera. Right. I have fond memories of watching that when I was a kid watching like, you know, you'll be there and all Scooby-Doo, all this stuff. Right. Like, so it goes with that. And then again, you have potential to bring back those, you know, revive some of those possible properties like the, associated with the new name. So if you are going to bring back, like, I don't know, let's pretend you're going to bring back Yogi Bear. Right. I don't know why you would. It's not really relevant to anything. But now you have a name that is associated with it and it kind of goes together. Right. Right. It would be yeah. weird if you produced a Yogi Bear movie and it was like, <coughs> said like, by AT&T or whatever. Like, sure. that's weird that doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> but if you have the right name attached to that marketing then like it it makes sense you know at least a little bit uh, at least that's what i think so i just thought it was cool i was like whoa i was just talking about that look at that yeah. that's a crazy <laughs> i love it so i thought that was exciting i just put that down in my little uh notebook arena thing to uh, remember to bring up because I don't want to forget that one. So there you go. Hanna Barbera coming back. You too can. I don't. I forgot to write down what properties they were going to be making, but uh, the <laughs> the studio is making a return. Boom. 
There you go. Some exciting, <laughs> exciting news that, <laughs> that I heard randomly. <laughs> yeah. The studio is currently in development of the Amazing World of Gumball movie. Oh. Ah. There we go. Oh, that's the working title. Apparently they are still de- deciding what they're exactly going to name it, but Gumball is... I mean, I figure that's a pretty good title. Well, that, that's, right? that's actually a, a, a cartoon now. Like, that's like yeah. the actual title of it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could, uh, you could just call it The Amazing World of Gumball movie yeah. done that's not the most exciting title no i suppose but it does have brand recognition that's, that's important true. you don't want to call it like steve's crazy time adventure and be like what what is that i don't know yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even mean anything but sometimes they do that they be like oh we're gonna get so cute and creative with our title and you look at it and you go what well, i don't know what that i don't is. yeah i've that's happened a few times to me, like you see them, you see them advertise like a show, yeah, or like a movie, and just like the title and thing, and you don't know what to expect from that at all. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fully understand what that is. Well, yeah. also, it's like recently, I guess I don't know if it was like the tail end of last year or this year, they came out with a partially live action animated Tom and Jerry movie. And that that movie bombed hard because everyone was making it on stage. Such a bad job of explaining, right? Well, yeah, and so like it, like they 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 market it, they pushed for it. Like, guys, this is gonna be like best animated movie of the year, but like it tanked badly because you know besides like the CGI being bad, people like don't. Oh, really care about Tom and Jerry that much. Like it's not as exciting as it once was. And so I think they're they were trying to bank so much on that recognition for that. And it was it was kind of disappointing. I was like, oh you know, live action Tom and Jerry movie. Okay, it's kind of cool and oh it's too cheesy and uh, too gimmicky and very predictable. Yeah. Kinda expected that really. But question what are your guys? What are your all, all's take on on Tom and Jerry? Was it one that you enjoyed? I would never seek seek it out. Like if it was on TV, like it, you know. Oh, well, I, I don't remember like watching it like on you know Saturday morning cartoons or anything. But it was still one of those things where you know some of the episodes I found like really enjoyable and you know something that was just you know. Like, oh wow, this is Tom and Jerry. Or if it was like, especially on like Boomerang, I gotta remember that channel, kind of throwing it back out there. But you know, if it was on Boomerang, like, oh yeah, I'd I watch it. It's got you know something interesting to watch. Tom and Jerry, it's classic, it's iconic. But I never like went out of my way to watch it. It wasn't like you know the Dragon Ball Z for me. Like I, I am home from school, I have to watch Dragon Ball Z. Um, Tom and Jerry would be on, like, oh cool, Tom and Jerry, and then I would just watch it. I never really liked Tom and Jerry. And I think that's because of all of the cartoons, it was the one that seemed that I watched at least like for works. What? Hello. I said, it's just said my internet connection was unstable again. So we'll see if this lasts. Oh gosh. (laughs) Okay. Uh, No. Anyway. Um, no, I just I just felt like it was one of the ones that was probably the most mean spirited because I I could never like as a kid could never tell like do they actually like each other? Like I know they're supposed to be like good friends that just bicker a lot, but it was it, more so than just like the like another example of something that tried to do this was like the Roadrunner and Coyote where there was a kind of that felt like there was a purpose to it of like what the Coyote was trying to do. But I think it was because the Roadrunner never actively fought back. He just dodged everything, right? Like he was yeah. he wasn't also building great big machines to go and try and injure Coyote, right? It was it was not a tit for tat. It was just kind of a it, it none of Coyote's schemes ever worked. So that that one it worked more for me. Um Tom and Jerry again just felt felt a little, little bit more mean spirited in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. I the 
Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner still had that problem of like, why? Why is he going through such length? Why is he so angry? He's hungry. <laughs> I'll stop. I, eat him. I, mean, I guess so, but <laughs> I guess, but I don't know. at some point, just got to move on, man. But you're right, Tom and Jerry does. There's often like mean spirited, like, just like cartoon violence for the sake of cartoon violence was like i'm just gonna like smack this dude with a refrigerator like what yeah <laughs> what that yeah. escalated quickly like yeah. what is happening <laughs> oh man <laughs> and the fact that they don't ever like talk really it's like there's no other personality traits other than like how mad they are <laughs> <laughs> see that's what i'm saying like it, anyway <laughs> cartoons from our childhood uh, they're kind of weird like I don't know yeah. <laughs> oh yeah no it, I look back on many of those and I'm like huh that was a choice right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I haven't watched a lot of those in a long time so like I don't really know I don't have like a reference and i don't even remember a lot of them i just like vaguely remember there was a thing but I, they were so like throwaway as far as like plot goes oh, sure. or like yeah. what was actually happening in the character development is like so non-existent or one-dimensional that now i'm like mm, i don't i guess that was a thing i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i vaguely recall that happening like i don't sure. But really was, no. I guess that was kind of true for all of the the cartoons, right? Like they're, they're in the end, they're all completely meaningless. Oh, and yes, not that's important. true. <laughs> but like, so you know, but other cartoons actually have like stories that they tell, sure, or like character development sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> not just like whatever some of those like some of the looney tunes right i mean there's some classic ones but then there's a whole bunch of like what what's going on <laughs> yeah i guess that's kind of the difference between uh like you said like a ongoing story versus sketch comedy like there is real no continuity from one to one in most of those like well, you know, yeah and i guess that might be i think th- well, I think the way you just broke it down, that actually might sum it up slightly for me, because I don't really like sketch comedy in any form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? There's a couple, like, that are funny, but I don't seek them out, and I don't remember most of them, except for, like, the only sketch comedy thing I can think of right this second off the top of my head is the Monty Python dead parrot. That's all I got. <laughs> but because it's just so like, it's funny. Get it? Ha ha ha. Like, I'm always just like, mm. right. Okay. I don't know. It doesn't hit me the same like sketch yeah. comedy. That's why I never really liked Saturday Night Live or the other one, Mad TV, when that was a thing, right? Oh, Those are both on yeah. like, they were fine and sometimes they were funny I guess <laughs> but I wasn't ever really like oh man I've got to watch it this week because I'm so excited like, never... I'll watch it I guess like <laughs> you know it wasn't ever anything like I wasn't ever like waiting and super excited about it or anything like that so i always have been drawn more towards like just story telling things and if there are funny story beats that's one thing but like i'm generally drawn to narrative i would say so even in my cartoons right like i liked cartoons that had some kind of story didn't necessarily have to be a good story right but like tell me some kind of story. Like a lot of cartoons when I was a kid, there was like adventure y, right? Like mm-hmm. those are the ones that I remember liking. You know, like DuckTales, right? Yep. Boom. There we go. There's a topical thing. So I brought that back a little bit ago. Woo. Like that's a fun. Yeah. 
that's a like there are silly funny parts in that <laughs> but there are they are telling you a story and there is like an overarching connectivity between episodes because they're you know duckburg or it's the same cast of characters and there's different people yeah. around right that for me is more memorable right? right those are the ones i remember like like those big cartoons of my childhood are like the ninja turtles but not for because it's funny i just really like those for i just connect with that for some reason i really enjoyed that uh like <laughs> but for, as far as like uh, in the style of DuckTales, like those Disney style ones, I really like like Chip and Rescue Rangers, like we talked about I think, a little bit before. Uh, for the same reason, like there's a a cast of characters that has like unique character traits, and they work together to do thing, right? Yeah. And so it's <laughs> it moves around. There's silly parts. There's but it's like a story, and it's for me. It's just much more interesting. It's entertaining. You get invested in watching it. You want to watch more of it because the story might continue, possibly, right? <clears throat> They're going to be connected in some way. You never know. Shows like that, like, they're so... I don't know. Sometimes I feel disparate because you're like, a thing will happen, and then, like, next season, the character comes back. You're like, whoa, oh my gosh, I remember expert, right? So you're kind of like, that way... <coughs> I like that I, one. I like that kind of stuff. Tailspin. That was the other one. Oh, yeah. I think we talked about that before, too, but yep. I like yeah. that show, too. <laughs> it's actually at this point in the conversation where Aaron reminds us of Cows of Moo Mesa, and then we move on. That's hey, true. That's great, true. I hear they're show. the real cowboys. Uh, that's on. <laughs> Biker Vice from Mars? Anybody? <laughs> I always forget no, about that why? one. I do. I um, wonder why. <laughs> there, so... I, in the in the kind of the later series, like watching South Park, I know that's not everyone's like favorite, but I, you know, earlier seasons of South Park, it was very like, oh, there's this episode and then this episode, but like none of it was connected. In that's the true. later in the later seasons of South Park, like they were very episodic, like they're all connect, like a whole season was connected in some way or another, and I I really liked how that was kind of incorporated because that was never really like a thing South Park was known for of just doing things very, you know, episodic -y, very, you know, all tie in connected in some way or, or another. Um, I, I like, true. you know, I, I like episode or, you know, stuff that do that, but I also really enjoy, you know, just the kind of the classic, um, Oh, this show does this. And then the next, like the next episode doesn't tie in, but it's like trying to get like truly invested into it. It's like, Oh, well, this is actually like connected into some way or fashion. Um, and I just really like shows that are like that. Um, there's, what have I been watching? Um, I watched a, uh, is it Amazon, Amazon show called invincible. It's kind of like an animated superhero thing. Definitely not for the faint of heart by any chance means. Um, but it's a really cool like superhero genre esque movie. Or like there there's only like five or six episodes, but they're almost like hour long each. And they, they just have a unique kind of take on kind of like the su superhero family. Um and kind of how it just kind of look into modern days. And then like I said, that it's it's one of those things like every episode is tied in some way or another. And I just, I just kind of like how that part is done to it. Well, yeah, it doesn't have to be directly tied in. That's why I yeah. initially gave my uh, example as Ducktales, right? Because like, they, <laughs> like every episode is like a standalone, a thing happens, but they take place in a very like common, I guess the modern word would be universe, right? Where like. <laughs> The there's lots of reoccurring characters that show back up, so there's an interconnectedness in that. Like Duckburg is a character, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, where like the town and its denizens are part of the story as well. So you're seeing the same people consistently, so it feels con more connected, uh, even if like the actual events of each episode and the shenanigans that they get up to um, are not connected. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so I think that's 
<clears throat> that's why I picked that example because I, I felt like it did a good job of that. Like it's one of those where it's like, it's its own character. Like the city is its own character kind of. So like the mm-hmm. stories that happen in it are <clears throat> in and around it. And sometimes they leave, they go off on, they do weird things, but like that helps to tie it together. Right. That's kind of how old South Park was too. Like South Park, the town mm-hmm. is kind of that way too. Right. It kind of filled that role of the town is what's connecting everything together. Not, not that. So it's like its own special character in the whole thing. Right. So that's a, that's a way that you could do that. That's a way that some, some stories work in that fashion. And it's interesting when they do that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, because they, you know, you have that familiar setting and then the setting is kind of what ties everything together in a certain way. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's very it's a little it's a little deeper than you would necessarily think for like a, a cartoon show, right? It reminds me of like Hundred Years of Solitude, right? It's like that. Like it's the <laughs> <laughs> Right. Just the, the in the fact that like the location is so important. Or like uh yeah. what's that other the those pillars of the earth, like the Ken Follett novels they write, like those are like the location is important. The characters are important. The stuff is important. The location is super important for that stuff, right? In that kind of just style of writing. Yeah. And that, that plays good to television series. You know, a lot of TV series are like that, really, if you kind of think about it, right? Like, you know, doctor shows, they take place in a hospital, like house, right? Like, a lot of those episodes aren't connected at all. They try to weave some dumb story. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. whatever, but like especially in the later series, like guys, stop! You just you try too hard. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> but it's the hospital that's kind of the thing, right? They take on that role when there's a in the same setting over and over again, or like an older show like Twin Peaks, right? That's like an, the setting is important to the storytelling. So it's just <clears throat> again, even if those events aren't connected, the setting is so consistent and so big. That it can really carry and tie in a lot of different things. And that's cool, too, because sometimes you have a story that takes place in this part of the town. And sometimes a story takes place in that part of the town. But you're still in, like, the town, right? Yeah. And so it, it helps tie things together. I think it's fun. I like that. As a, as a certain method of storytelling. I don't know. Try to think of other examples, but that's what I got so far. Well, I think, I think just in the more... <clears throat> Uh, simplified version of that, I like to think of it as you get reoccurring bits, right? Especially if you're thinking about more comedy, right? Like the same thing, you start getting the same reoccurring things and what that does is all of a sudden you start being able to see more personalities for people because yeah, you get that familiarity. familiarity. They start doing the same thing in the same, in similar situations kind of over and over and you're like, oh, okay, like this person really I understand, you know, like where, you know, what this means to them or what kind of person they are now because this is, you know, how they act or whatever. And I, I really like that because you can, you can, it's more, pre- it's more predictable. And you're, and you're, Cause when you, during sketch comedy, like good sketch comedy is going to take you from like all the way from like, you, you've got to be intro to somebody, become just familiar enough with them to make whatever's going to happen funny and then it's end. Right. But like, you can yeah. really build that relationship with them. And it does sound kind of silly of like, yeah, oh, we're talking about this at uh, DuckTales. Like, ugh, like it's not that big of a deal, but DuckTales still, is great. It is great. <laughs> yeah. And don't hear what I'm not saying. It's great. I know. I'm just I, <laughs> no offense. Don't get angry. But, uh, you know, it, it, it applies to more than just serious cinema. Oh, yeah. No, totally. <clears throat> it's just that. And I think, I don't know. I'm trying to formulate my thought here and it's not coming together without just repeating what exactly what I said before. So I'm just going to spare you that part. But yeah, I get that. And I think, but there, again, the, the reason that the sketch comedy, I think falls short with me is because it always feels a lot of it feels very forced Sure, because they, they either are, they are either are relying too much on the same thing mm. or yeah. like, they're just like forcing it in because it's a sketch. They have five minutes to do the thing and then move on. Right. And so it's like, uh, 
because after a while it gets tired, right? Like I, there's only so many times you can watch the, you know, Wiley e. Coyote hold an anvil and fall off a cliff that it's going to be funny. Yeah. Right? There's like a, <laughs> there's a limit. Right. So, <laughs> right. You get, I, there's only so many times you could see Tom hit Jerry with a mallet. It's funny. <laughs> right. Right. It's like they do it all the time because it's the familiar thing. It's what they do. <laughs> but after a while, it's like, yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> cool. At least in my opinion, right? It's kind of where I'm like, yeah. Mm, yeah. So even though I like, like, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, I guess in principle, watching them do the same exact bit for the 400th time in a mildly different circumstance. It's not as funny anymore. <laughs> the most exciting thing in the world. Sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I'll give you that. <laughs> it's predictable. Huh? That's true. That's what I mean. Some, it's, it's like you can also think about it. Sometimes it's just like sometimes media is just like comfort food, right? Uh-huh. You just yes. want that familiar thing. Yeah. Right. Like I know that French fries are not like gourmet delicacy. I am unaware that that is not like an exciting, <coughs> like, new, wonderful invention. Uh, sometimes I just want some stinky French fries, right? That's what, <laughs> that, that's it. That's what I want. Cause it's a familiar, it's the thing that I enjoy. So, yeah. That's I, I feel that it, it can be that way sometimes, right? You're like, oh, it's the thing that I like. It's comforting. It's familiar. I'll just sit down and watch it and, you know, whatever. So I, I understand that aspect of it, the comfort value in it. And that's what media is as well, right? It's important. That, like, like you said, like not all media has to be high art. It's okay if you like Con Air or Gone in 60 Seconds. It's not right. These are not. These are, these are never going to be like really award-winning, art-inspiring films. You can just like to sit down and watch them. That is allowed. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So that's what. Let's look at. <laughs> it's okay to watch Nicolas Cage launch a Mustang off a bridge for some reason. <laughs> you know, because, whatever. Yeah. Because of <laughs> because he can. Or can he <laughs> watch God find God. out after the commercial break? Right. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> uh, there we go. What? <laughs> I heard um let's talk about comfort food. Uh, I heard this idea. I cannot get credit for this. Um, I heard this and it, and it sounded fascinating to me. Um, in the world of you can order from your phone um, and from any restaurant and have it delivered because the person will go there in their car and pick up your order from the door and come and bring it to you. What if you still wanted the dine in experience, but were able to order from other restaurants? track with me uh <laughs> you go to is place. this is okay so is this like when we were kids and we went to mcdonald's and you didn't like mcdonald's and so we went to burger king and you brought your burger king into mcdonald's to eat yes. it is that what is that what's happening here yes this is what's happening here this is exactly what's happening here but imagine- listeners that really did happen listeners in america will be like what why <laughs> blasphemy yes we totally did that <laughs> But what if you <laughs> you were able to do that? You came and you sat down and they took your order. They ordered it from the other restaurants and then they drove to the restaurants and then came and put it back down. So you could get like French fries from McDonald's, but a steak and shake burger or, or and like a Wendy's shake. And then your your friend and compadre could get like a sirloin with mashed potatoes from a Winn Dixie or whatever. I don't know. But like it just how cool would that be? <laughs> First of all, you're literally just describing uh mine and Dusty's completely made up holiday turkey revolt Tuesday. 
Uh, and <laughs> before we do it at home, uh, I, don't, I think I think you would be hard pressed to find businesses that would go along with that because while you are, let's pretend you are sitting in uh, the McDonald's dine-in area, and you have pizza and tacos delivered to you. What you're doing is you are taking up space for people that want to be eating their food. <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> right? no, 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 and they no, can't, no. they don't have a place to sit. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this is a separate establishment. So call it like, like, um, food court R us. And you go there. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Th- no, th- yeah, this. All right. I was not tracking correctly. Oh, okay. so you, <laughs> you, you want to have just a restaurant. that's just a building with tables in it. Yes. Done. And their it, whole okay. thing is they will bring you food from other places and you can sit down and eat. <laughs> so there Wait, it, what's it, the business model then? How do you make any money on this? He's just like <laughs> that's what a pavilion at the park is. Right? Like yeah, there's so, like a picnic table at a park. That's what you that's what you just described to how, me. How do people like how do people like like DoorDash? How do they make money? Right? They take a little bit off the top to bring it to you, right? That's what so you charge people to sit yeah that's your plan yeah you like you rent the table DoorDash, DoorDash or something no like, no yeah. we don't have that here we're no. not we're not fancy enough down okay. here in, so in what, that barry county is, right we can't is, we don't have is that DoorDash is the the company and they read DoorDash as this national thing reaches out to restaurants and says do you want to be a part of this do you want to be a part of this and if you say yes that means that uh, an independent contractor can get an alert on their phone and say, <clears throat> Brandon has ordered uh, from Lilies and wants his food delivered. So you Darn place right your order through DoorDash <laughs> to Lilies. Lilies gets the DoorDash order, makes it, and sets it on the counter. The DoorDash driver comes and picks it up, brings it to your home. And yes. at each, right, so they take a little service charge yeah, and yeah. you can tip the person. Same thing, but instead of it being a national chain, it's more like local of like food court R us, and they so, just take a little bit off the top. So what, but like, what Colin is, but so what, what Colin is describing is that there's there's a rest or a place in Tulsa called Mother Road Market, and what what it what it is is that it is like a lot of the food trucks that. Um, that I have like little tiny instead of the food trucks, it's actually like in a little like kind of kiosk kind of thing, and it's it's literally like a food court of like local places like Tulsa, like Oklahoma places, um, things like that. So it's it's there's a place called yeah uh, yeah in Tulsa Mother Road Market, um, not that far from we from where we live. We we go there all the time because they have like such a wide variety of foods, but it's it's mostly. Um, like local places or like food truck places and you can just get you know pretty much whatever if you want to get like a burger from this place or like chinese from this little you know counter thing um and and they work with doordash too so doordash actually comes or you can sort of like order food from that place and then just go pick it up but then they have like uh like outside eating and like a little like inside eating that has kind of you know, walkways, all these kind of cool stuff. And they used to have like a little mini putt-putt course in there. But it, it's actually really cool if you get the chance. I would highly recommend Googling it. And if and if everyone comes down to Oklahoma one day, that is definitely where <laughs> um, we're going to be taking people just because it is so unique. And I, I just love going there because it's like, oh, I don't really want burgers or, oh, I want, you know, Italian or, oh, I kind of want, um, you know, like Asian food or or or, or you know, Indian food or whatever. So th- there's a lot of options that you get to choose from, and it's all like really good. But do they bring it to you? Can you sit in one spot and then little curries <clears throat> yeah, so, around and gather your so food? Because I don't want to have to walk anywhere. That's the whole. Point I mean, that's here. the part that here. I this is what I'm interested in. Colin saying is Colin. There is a building full of tables. Yeah, and uh, probably bathrooms. Right. Yes. Uh, you just go in there yeah. and sit down, and randomly someone comes to the door and shouts your name, and you just go get it, yeah. right? Well, well, no. Right. So you just tell you tell DoorDash to like deliver to that location, right? Is what you're saying? 
Uh, no, the, the, the building itself, like whoever, like a food court RS would take your order and they would be the DoorDash, right? Instead of DoorDash delivering mm-hmm. to your home, they would be the DoorDash and they would go get the stuff to you. Oh, so, so they have their own courier service. Yes, their own courier service. Okay, so have- this building has a little, has like a garage attached where there's like a fleet of dudes on m- mopeds. Mopeds. They just Absolutely. go out to all the local restaurants and get your carryout order. They yes. order the carryout for you. For you. Yes. Uh-huh. And then you bring it. <clears throat> they bring it to, and that way, you know, it's like we all like you have 20 people there and they can all order from a different place, but we're having the meal together at one location. I mean, I... And they don't actually make okay. any of the food. They they just have like maybe drinks. Um, but then, yeah, a fleet of. Oh, that's true. You could sell drinks. That'd be, yeah, that'd be yeah. good. And a fleet of, of uh, little, uh, uh, you know, Vespas or. Or whatever, and obviously leaves. little scooters, little scooters. men on <laughs> men and women on bicycles Ooh. zipping around, right? Honda Super Cubs, I don't know, <laughs> but they'll go around yeah. and uh, bring you back hot noodles, and you'll be fine. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how many people would patronize that place, like because it's like it would only be good if you were going out to eat with like a bunch of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, because like if you're eating by yourself, or if it was just like me and Susan, right? That place seems like it would not be useful. Right, because... and I think you, I think you'd have to have something you know, <laughs> else to make it maybe more of a destination place and more of an event thing. Like I don't know, like maybe you partner up with uh, Rainforest Cafe and you've got some animatronic monkeys swinging over your. Oh head dear! And, right? Oh man! I haven't thought about Rainforest. Is that still around? Is that is, is that still a thing? It was when Megan and I went to Nashville like a lot, like six years ago at this point, maybe seven. Okay, well, if it was there six years ago, I haven't seen one since I was like twelve. So yeah, I in Chicago, right, with mom? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I forgot that existed. So, so now imagine yeah. it's like a rainforest cafe. But with no food, like they don't have their own crappy food. But with no cafe, with no cafe, <laughs> it's the cafe away. Like the, oh, it's the oh, it's the rainforest away cafe. Oh my god! Oh dear! This is amazing. And you. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, okay, so <clears throat> I feel like animatronic things because what uh, is not enough of a draw to get people to come to that. It'd be like weird because you want to go see it one time. And after that, you're like, yeah, that was I don't need any more monkeys in my life. So, like, what else would you put in there to make it like a place where people would want to go, like legitimately want to go? (laughs) Not just like. An empty room, right? Like a warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like a barn. Yeah. It's like a barn with like a concrete floor and picnic tables, right? Like, <laughs> and like garage doors. And just right. on the side. Right. So, what do you put in there, Aaron? What do you put in there to make people want to go there for like Sunday <sighs> after church, right? When you have like a whole bunch of people, you're like 12 people, and you want to can't decide where to go eat maybe there's not enough room at a restaurant because that's a big thing if you want to go with a big party like say you want to get 20 people together to do a thing like if it's a birthday or something like oftentimes taking 20 people to go eat is impossible right you want to go out you want to do your thing but you can't like you can't fit in a restaurant you know so what do you put in this shed uh we're gonna upgrade it. This nice building to make it like appeal it. Other so, than drink service, you have to have like beverages because <laughs> beverage delivery is a bit tricky. So you want to have like all kinds of stuff there. So one one thing that 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 I've seen at this, I, I sent you guys a little like website link of it if you want to take a gander. Yeah, I saw but it. So some places, you know, offer like live music or different kind of atmospheres. But, okay. you know, like I said, Shelby and myself went, you know, just for two people. And what, what we've been doing 
the last few times is that we've ordered like one thing from different types of restaurants. Like we got these um, Thai um, spicy where are they? Um, fries that have like all these like really cool sauces on them. And then like we'll get like a you know chicken tender platter thing from some sort of like Chinese restaurant. And then we'll get like some sort of like salad from something. And then we'll get like dessert. And for two people, like that's you know pretty much all we can handle because there's just so much of it. But we always get, I mean, every time we go, it's always popping. Like it's just, it's never not busy. Um, I don't know if it's just the food or just the kind of the atmosphere. I don't want to call it like a hippie esque kind of place, but it's, it's a very like in a certain part of town. That's very like, Oh, imagine well. a place with a lot of hippies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is, um, are there are drum circles? Modern. <laughs> no, not, not, um, Hacky not hippies. That's not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> yep. Um, but more kind of like hipster. Yeah, say yuppie. Kind of yeah. place. <laughs> Hipsters. Um, more than anything and so there, there's there's a lot of that there as long as there's when, no drum circles yeah but it's not like Ugh. you know anything like like overly obnoxious or or anything like that it's actually like oh, okay you know i can you know i can vibe here this is kind of nice um yeah i mean it's, it's just kind of a really really chill kind of place to go with just different options and if, if you just want something unique like there's there's always something new to go in there. And I guess that's kind of a, a good little slogan if you wanted to, to think about it. But yeah, always there's just always, new. always just something new there. Yeah. I, I like the entertainment idea. You could have like a <clears throat> little music thing or like yeah. some kind of. I, so, oh, you could do like movie screenings in there. I got it. Right? You could just show movies, like, or yeah. you could just show Hanna Barbera cartoons all the time. <laughs> You know, hey. not a bad idea. No, hear me, hear me out on this. Okay, so we are trying to be one centralized location for whatever food possibilities that you would like. So what yeah. if inside this massive warehouse there are sections with different themed restaurants where you can <laughs> eat your food? <laughs> there you- so you want okay. the ambiance of an Italian restaurant, but you're really craving sushi and Mexican, so you can go <laughs> eat. <laughs> and then across the way is the one like the fast food joint with like the uh, you know tables and really sticky gummy surfaces that you could go. They're just like they're, they're all they're all uneven on purpose, or they're yeah. all the tables are wobbly. But you did it that way on purpose. Yes, you like broke off one of the little plastic things on the bottom of every table. Obviously, is it just to give it that flair, right? So, so you could literally you, what you're describing is a more grandiose version of. Do you remember that random hamburger place that we ate at, in like Vian, Oklahoma? You remember that yeah. when we went down to see Turtle Colin? Uh, yeah, like every single booth had like some kind of weird theme. Like yeah. one was like a beach, the other one was like yeah. NASCAR. You're like what? What? What is going on in here? I know. <laughs> I wish I could remember the name of that place because, listeners, I'm telling you, it was the weirdest restaurant I've ever been in my life. It had the best hamburger. That is, ever that is what I was about to follow up with. It is my entire life. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> uh, but it's a, so Colin's describing a more grandiose version of that. That would be funny. Uh, I would appreciate the irony of eating like tacos. In the fine dining Italian section, that would just be humorous. Yeah. Uh, maybe the first two times, okay. <clears throat> but after that, okay, I would be like, I need something else to do. I don't know if you have to have like something else, like some other draw that you would want to go there. The, the, the more I think about this, the more I am like. <laughs> Literally, we were just reinventing a food court. Uh, and I mean, really, yes, we are. Just like literally, there's something like an arcade, and I'm just describing the Battlefield Mall uh, food court circa like 1995, right? Got a carousel, uh, a carousel, and a movie theater right there, right? That was the dang it. Well, anyway. man, <laughs> we reinvented man. the food court. For the there we go. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> like weird tile floors you gotta have that weird tile floor in those like bizarre the weird beige trash cans right they're kind of mm. like <laughs> like a weird one. i guess it was more of a taupe right Ugh. uh 
Nothing, nothing ever good was <laughs> <laughs> comes with. I guess it was taupe, right? That's not a taupe. Taupe <laughs> gray, maybe. I don't know, somewhere <laughs> between taupe and gray. Excitement, man. That we got, we for I keep we got it. The mall is on the list for Joe topics because that's a long one. But like, <laughs> so I don't want to go into that right now. But man. <laughs> Oh, speaking makes of, me sad. The other day, somebody went to one of the malls and was like, "Yeah, there was like nothing in there." I was like, "Man, makes me kind of sad." Cause I like, <laughs> like I don't know, not like liked, but it was enjoyable. Well, I we know, just spent so it. much time there, right? Like, <laughs> like oddly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like you said, it was like a thing. Like it was a while people were doing stuff, you could just go do something else. Right. It was just, it's like a really large enclosed space. You sort of roam around and do whatever you want. And then somehow, with the ma- without the aid of cellular phones, uh, show up and meet somebody on a bench at the exact right time and then leave. Right. So, so, yeah. Right. So I'm like, we're going to coordinate this. I don't know how, but here we go. I don't know how. When they had clocks on the wall, like every. 20 feet so that's probably how but it's fine <laughs> yeah we gotta come back to that topic okay cool <clears throat> i was uh reminded today uh well actually i was reminded of when you said the word taupe and i said nothing uh, is interesting that is described as being taupe um i didn't know this but well i okay so um Disney- you have to have a neutral color for all the flashy signage in the food court that's well, why you have to have the, the trash can be like <laughs> this gets to where i'm going um, they, so Disney World and Disneyland are studied for many <coughs> things as far as like customer service and the magic of whole, like, you know, where they're like, you know, we do all this stuff behind and all the tunnels and trying to preserve yeah. things. They have a palette of, you know, one of the things that is called is, um, go away green or no see green or no see gray. Where they have scientifically derived colors that they paint things that they don't want you to notice. And they paint like doors for emergency exits, this or um, like speakers and rocks uh, to obscure patches. And <laughs> I think maybe you should not paint the emergency exit in the okay. invisible no, color. Not emergency exit, but like, like the entrance for like, like the staff entrance, yeah, right? Like that's yeah, what that's what. <laughs> like paint the emergency one red please like, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean of course we have exits camouflage that they? i don't know but <laughs> no one could see it <laughs> but it was it's stuff that they have um designed uh as a way of keeping places again keeping you more in the moment so that you you know so you don't mo- rec- maybe necessarily recognize all of the the the, the modern things around you or um, it, uh, just obscures things from your from your brain because it's like this color is literally so boring. Your brain just blends in. Yeah, really acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's very interesting. When you said green, the first thing that came to mind was the elementary school bathroom color, yeah. and that was like it's really not a pleasant color. So I was very off put when you Uh-oh. said green. well, like that that real like really pale green color. <laughs> simply right. green it's like would... pale green and white and it's like yeah. <laughs> it's why well. that paint is not well at all right <laughs> no <laughs> they not encourage you to spend more time in there i guess that was what they were wanting i mean that's true <laughs> we repulse you out we want, like we're, we're this is this gonna be so psychological unimportant. warfare on our <laughs> our young children <laughs> yes <laughs> with this color <laughs> Make this place so unpleasant that you want to leave immediately. And so, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one thing you can do with colors. It's true. <laughs> I don't know if it worked or not. I just remember exactly what that bathroom looked like for some reason. <laughs> so, well, like, I, I mean, <laughs> you, you remember it, so it had an impact. <laughs> yes. I remember the weird old soap dispenser, you know, the one that has like, it has the globe on the top, and you have to just push up that metal pin. Oh, and it lets the soap just, out. 
awful because it would like yeah right and gunky and you were literally pushing your hand into and through into like, a, a metal golf tee looking thing right yeah <laughs> and like the leftover soap from the 40 people before you and just, you know, yeah yeah you, and then the paper towel thing was like it had that it was white and had that little tiny uh chrome handle that smooth chrome handle like a pencil sharpener that just had to whip it off oh. and wind it out Oh yeah, so good. <laughs> uh, so make the bathrooms in the uh, to go our us place, whatever. <laughs> like much more appealing than that. Don't put that color in there. And make it <laughs> yeah. Don't use the go away green. I don't know. We'll have to work with some sort of interior decorator work this make this work. But it's true. I'm feeling this. This all that could be the other draw. You know, have you been to those restaurants where the bathroom is just like insanely weird looking, and it's just like <laughs> there's like all kinds of it's like no. really weird. Like the design is just like really bizarre. There's like <laughs> what you're talking about. You're even like example. some restaurants. One example. Oh, okay. uh, like uh, I can't think of a restaurant, but like the like some bathrooms have just like an extreme like theme of weird things going on, right? Like the have you ever been to the bathroom in the Ripley's Believe It or Not in Branson? I've been to the Ripley's Believe It or Not in Branson, but I don't believe I have been in their Believe It or Not bathroom. Yeah, well, one of the bathrooms, like, it's just got, like, a lot of, like, so, like collections of stuff are just in there, like, on the wall. <laughs> well, that makes sense for a Believe It or Not Ripley's Museum. Of course you're going to see the world's tiniest thumbnail while you're washing your hands or in you know yeah right like just weird stuff in the bath like that so you should make got to make the bathroom like something because if you're gonna have if you are gonna go through the path of like having like separate kiosk areas of like uh i keep imagining the warehouse idea and it's hilarious because i just think about like a ceiling that's like really tall and then a bunch of partitions that are like only eight feet tall so you could just like see over <laughs> right you get like all the light in um <laughs> anyway like <laughs> uh the bathroom has to be like something insane right so it has to be like some wild thing like all its own like its own crazy like theme or whatever just like so nuts that people are like oh my gosh did you see the bathroom in there that's It'd so be crazy hard because we're trying to combine like, so many different themes of restaurants but i think if it was something like like a pure african safari with like waist high grass <laughs> and like Perfect. animatronic leopards uh like walking uh maybe. don't do that you'll scare some children right they'll be like i was killed in the bathroom <laughs> almost there's like all this or no it has to be completely different right like the, <laughs> it's gotta be like so the the inside are all like restaurant themed bathrooms <laughs> But or like the restaurant themed uh seating areas, uh -huh. but the bathroom is like baseball stadium. It's like austere. <laughs> With a trough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really want to avoid or like room vibe. What's something else that'd be like crazy? Like a I don't know, like a boat, like a bo <laughs> a boat. Yeah, right. The do, do the head of the boat or like actual porta potties right like <laughs> just actual <laughs> <laughs> not even pretend ones like real legit with the blue stuff in the bottom and real porta potties here. yep yep wow Leave that sounds -star this is because we, i thought we wanted this to be appealing right like, well, I, you like said you wanted it to be <laughs> different <laughs> and rememberable that's true i'm also realizing that we're going to do something with uh, sound dampening and music because the cacophony and assault on the senses from the different music each of these restaurants is going to be playing is going to be very nauseating. No, 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 no. You just have one track that loops, right? You play like one song because it's a 25 foot ceiling with only like eight foot partitions. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. one sound ambiance from everywhere. Uh, so it's got, but it goes on a loop. It plays like one Italian song, one like. 50s diner song. <laughs> right. <laughs> One like Japanese pop song. Right. Like, just yeah, like in, the this in there. And uh, yeah, yeah. then there's a mariachi song. I'd love this. Oh, yeah. Not It'd be great. That'd be oh, no. You know what would be hilarious 
Here we go. So the whole restaurant's like food themed, yeah. right? But then the bathroom is like literary theme for some reason. So the bathroom is just like Alice in Wonderland. You're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> go to the bathroom it's just like crazy like the the mirror is like upside down and like <laughs> uh, hookah smoking caterpillar in one of the stalls yes, the stall. it's just an animatronic caterpillar that's taking up one of them you could Zero. use it if there weren't any There's no the stalls the, to get to the stalls you, it's like you have to open a tree like to get <laughs> there's there's one stall with a with a caterpillar smoking hookah on it and a tree in the corner, and you, yeah, but you you have, but to, you have to open the tree up, and that's open like the, the oh, okay, that's like yeah, it's like a mystery, like what's happening? We we are all <laughs> security is going to be very busy uh, finding all. It's the gonna be great. It's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, <laughs> well, welcome. Here's here's uh, here's here's a po- menu possibilities and a tracker to make sure so we can find you. Hit the red button. Yes, when you get lost in the bathroom, and the bathroom is like way too big, right? Like it's <laughs> like, like, with awkward, like yeah, it's no this it's oh no to big. make it like real Alice in Wonderland, like you have to go like way off into a corner, and the doors for the bathroom are like jammed in the corner. At, but it's like a false wall, so like the bathroom is actually like enormous. So you're like, oh man, it's just like a one person bath. Oh my gosh, it's huge in here, right? Like huge. <laughs> <laughs> but all the fixtures are are like three quarter size in a very large room. So <laughs> that'd be even better. Yeah, right? like the sinks are like like the faucet is actually like small. Like what? Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This may because you want to annoy your customers as much as possible. This is perfect. <laughs> well, it may have some ADA uh, accessibility concerns, so that's uh, fine. We'll have, to, we'll have to work it out. It'll be fine. That's okay. We'll, we'll get the code book and we'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be okay. There's a loophole in there. Sure. <laughs> It'll be wonderful. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we better. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that sounds really good. I'm really interested in the investors uh, oh, and yeah, uh, the possibility. Yeah, there we go. It's going to have to be in a large area because, like, uh, I don't know, my town probably cannot support uh, this endeavor. I don't know if there's enough people no, to a, want to patronize this. Uh, this will go really good. People, people in LA, they're going to love this. They're going to really. All right, we'll this. see. We'll see. Right. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. You know, Seattle, they're going to basically, you know, basically, they're going to try and live in there and turn this into obviously something for them. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we should probably button it up. Uh, and, okay. Uh, talk to you guys again soon. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Love you. Love, Love you too. <laughs>